whatever made you choose to do so. My name is Faith and I typically post DIY and home decor here on YouTube. And today we have a very, 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 very special DIY. As you can tell by the title, today we are going to be making the CD2 bookcase. Now this bookcase is very popular. I see it all on Instagram, all on YouTube, and it has every right to be. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, the way it's made. I love it, it's very sleek, very pretty. And I went to the website to see how much it costs and no ma'am. <laughs> You're not robbing me today. I just could not justify $348 on this bookcase. I mean, I'm sure it's probably worth every penny, but right now I'm not willing to spend that. So protect your coins if you don't want to spend that. Why not just make it? So today I thought that would be perfect to just come on and show you guys how I made this bookcase. I'm actually going to be putting this bookcase into my closet which is going to be coming out next week so stay tuned for that video so this is my plan i want to have five shelves on this bookcase so i'm going to have five shelves at 11 and 3 fourths inch deep and 27 inches long and they're about an inch thick and this shelf is going to be 73 inches tall and each shelf is going to be spaced 12 inches apart and the bottom shelf will be 8 inches from the ground. So the supplies that you'll need to make this bookcase is 5 1 inch by 11 and 3 fourths inch boards cut to 27 inches long, 2 3 fourths inch by 6 foot square steel tubes, 2 8 inch steel shelf brackets, 18 number 12 by a half inch sheet metal screws or five packs of five, two 2 inch by a half inch corner brackets, 10 1 inch by a half inch corner brackets or three packs of four, 3 16 of an inch metal drill bit, 10 number 10 by 3 4 inch wood screws, Zinso primer and any paint of your choice, spray paint in any color of your choice, and eight drywall and stud anchors and screws. Taking some TSP, I thoroughly cleaned both of the steel tubes. They were quite dirty, so you want to make sure you clean them thoroughly, making sure to scrub them until there's no more dirt on them. Then I gave them one coat of the white primer and two coats of the white spray paint. And I repeated the steps for the shelf brackets as well. I do recommend that you do this towards the end because you're probably gonna have to do some touch-up spray paint after you assemble the shelf. Next, I sanded down each board using an 80 grit sandpaper until they were smooth to my liking. So the CB2 shelf is held together with two metal rods on either side that mount to the wall. And the way that they're connected is each shelf has a little notch that's cut out for the metal rods to sit flush in between the shelves. Um, so this is gonna kind of be the most difficult part and kind of something that we're going to have to figure out how we're gonna be able to create those notches. So you'll need some sort of tool, whatever it is that you feel comfortable using to create this notch. What I have is a jigsaw. I did some research and they said that using a table saw would probably create the most precise and clean cut but unfortunately I don't have that so what I have to work with is my jigsaw so I realized that I'm kind of limited in the cuts that I'm going to be able to make in the precision of them but I'm going to figure out a way to work around that because I still want to be able to create the shelf in the way that I want to do it and the way that I want to do it is to have those notches just like the CB2 shelf has in there. I created this template in the exact width and depth of the tube to trace onto the boards. This way I knew the exact placement of where the tube should be 
and I made sure I placed it right in the middle of the boards. Then I drew a line from a bottom corner to the opposite corner and this is how I will be cutting the wood using my jigsaw. I secured the shelf using my clamps. Now this is very crucial because it will help stabilize the shelf. So taking my jigsaw, I cut along each side following the lines that I drew. Then I cut along the diagonal line. I found this to be the easiest way to cut the top of the square. Next, I cut along the top of the square. Then I placed the tube into the cutout to make sure that the cutout was deep enough to fit the tube. And I repeated this for each side. You want to make sure that the tube sits flush with the edge of the wood when you're cutting out these notches. So I took some putty to fix some of the parts that I had overcut and again placed the tube into the cutout to make sure that it did sit flush to my liking. Taking my Zinsser primer, I primed each shelf and then applied two coats of a Sherwin-Williams extra white and an eggshell finish. I just had this on hand, but you can use any paint color that you'd like. Now I'm going to attach the shelf brackets to the steel tubes using the two inch corner brackets. First, I flipped the metal brackets onto its backside and lined up the corner bracket with the end of the shelf bracket. And I made sure to clamp this down so that it was secure to my workspace. I marked where I needed to drill the holes and then using the metal drill bit, I slowly pre-drilled some holes where I marked it off. Slow and steady wins the race when it comes to drilling into metal. It's a lot thicker, a lot harder. It requires a lot more pressure and power than it would be just to drill into a wall or wood. So definitely take your time and go slow. Then I attached the corner bracket to the shelf bracket using these half inch sheet metal screws. Next clamp one of your tubes to your work desk and place one of the brackets to the edge of the tube like so. And again, mark where you want to drill your holes and pre-drill your holes. And then attach the corner brackets the same way that you attached it to the shelf brackets. Next, I began measuring and marking off where I wanted each shelf to be. I wanted the bottom shelf to be eight inches from the ground, so I first started off by measuring eight inches from the bottom of the tube. Since I want each shelf to be 12 inches apart and each shelf is about one inch thick, I measured 13 inches from that first line and repeated that four times on each tube. Then I placed both tubes together and re-measured each line using my L ruler to make sure they were in the exact spot on each tube. Using tape, I created a template of the width of the shelf and made a hole directly in the middle so that I knew where to pre-drill the holes onto the tubes. I placed this template right above the line that I marked off. Then I pre-drilled a hole using the same metal drill bit. I eventually clamped both tubes together 
and pre-drilled a hole in each tube right next to each other so that I knew that the holes would be in the exact same spot on each tube. Next, I placed the one inch corner brackets over the hole and attached them using the same sheet metal screws. I repeated the step five times on each tube until I had all of the brackets on there. So I did not specify how you're supposed to be screwing in these L brackets for the shelves. You want to make sure that you screw in the L brackets on the inner side of the tube. This way that they'll be facing each other so that when you attach the shelf on top of it, you'll be screwing the L brackets into the inside of the wood shelf. I decided to attach the shelves while the bookcase was in the position that it was going to be in. That way I didn't have to move it when it was all attached and done. Starting at the top, I took one shelf at a time and placed it on top of the corner brackets that we attached and then attached them by first pre-drilling holes in them and then attaching them using these wood screws. Eventually, I went back in and I touched up on the paint and spots where the spray paint may have rubbed off and I also painted the screws white to match the shelf and to pull everything together. And then I mounted this baby to the wall. And that is it guys, we created this shelf. We did it. <laughs> this has to be my favorite DIY yet. This is actually the, the most extreme and the biggest DIY I've ever made. I've There's a lot of tools I've never used before and a lot of things I've never done. And I learned so much during this process. And I am so happy that I was able to create this. And I pushed myself and challenged myself to make something like this. You know, a year ago, I probably would have never known that I could be able to do this. And now I'm like, I got this. So tell me what you guys think. Is there something that you would have done differently? I I know that this is by no means perfect, but it's just exciting and overwhelming to know that I was able to make something like this. So if you're interested in seeing how I actually style this bookcase, then stay tuned for part two of this closet makeover series will I completely transform my master closet? And that will be coming out in next week video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Bye. This is the position you want to be in. <laughs> oh, it's a tight squeeze.